Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to bridge the gap between the two definitions of the convolution. On the earlier video, we showed that the convolution between two functions, f of t and g of t, can be written as the integral of the f of tau, which is a dummy variable with g of t minus tau dt integrated from 0 to t. We showed you graphically in the previous video that all that was, that it was simply two functions sliding over one another and that the value of the convolution was simply going to be the height of the first function times the height of the second function times the amount of the overlap between the two functions. And we realized there was going to be four regions, a region from 0 to 2 where there's not going to be any overlap, a region from 2 to 3 where there's going to be a partial overlap of the front of the first function with the second function. Then we had region 3 from 3 to 4 where we're going to have a partial overlap of the two functions as this is sliding past. And finally region 4 where the two functions are completely separated from one another. We could see that graphically the value of the convolution was always going to be the height of the first function times the height of the second function times the amount of the overlap. So in this case it was going to be 2 times 3 times the width of this strip right here. Now we also showed you before that since this is also the definition of the convolution, we should be able to get the equations and the value of the convolution using that particular definition. And the answer is yes, we can. So what we're going to do here is, again, for the four regions, from t being between 0 and 2, for t being between 2 and 3, for t being between 3 and 4, and for t being greater than 4, we can find the convolution values. Now it's easy for this region, we know it's going to be equal to zero because there's no overlap and we know that it's going to be equal to zero there because there's no overlap. But for the other two regions, as they're sliding over one another, we can then see that the definition can be as follows. F convolved with G is equal to the integral. Now the limits have to be from where it's the value of two to where they end overlapping, which is the value of T. So the overlap goes from two to t, and that's why your limits are from 2 to t, of the value of the first function times the value of the second function of t minus tau. Now where that t minus tau came from is you took the second function, g of t, you folded it over, so every t became negative t, so we use the dummy variable tau so we don't get confused, and then as you begin to slide it, you want to evaluate where the location is of the front and the location of the back. And since the difference between those two is 1, because the width of that is equal to 1, you can see that it would be t and t minus 1. And now you begin to slide those two functions over one another, which is the convolution. And so you can see then that the limit in this case would be from where they begin to overlap at 2 to where they end overlapping at t. Those are the limits of your integration of f of t times g of t minus tau, which is the fold of g. And then when you plug in the values, you know that the height of f of tau it's going to be, ooh, where are we here? There we go. The value of that is going to be equal to 3. Then g of t minus tau, the height of that, is going to be equal to 2. So we end up with 3 times 2 times d tau. In this case, it's fairly straightforward because the height of each of the functions is a constant. It's 3 for this function and 2 for that function. So we have the height of f of t, the, the height of g of t minus tau, so there always will be 3 and 2, times d tau. Now we integrate, so we end up with 6 times tau evaluated from 2 to t. When we plug in the upper and lower limits, we get 6 times t minus 2, which is 6 t minus 12. The value of the convolution between 2 and 3 is going to be 6 t minus 12. Notice that when t is equal to 2, 6 times 2 is 12, 12 minus 12 is 0. That means it starts at 0. But when t is equal to 3, 6 times 3 is 18 minus 12, which is 6, which at 3, the value of the convolution is 6. Now we want to again integrate it using the definition of the convolution going from 3 to 4. And so I have that over here. So the convolution from 3 to 4, we go f convolved with g. Now the limits change. So here you can see that this is now beginning to slide past. The limits are from t minus 1, which is the back end of this function, to where they stop overlapping, which is 3. So those are the two limits now. From t minus 1 to 3 of f of tau times g of t minus tau. 
Again, the heights of the two functions, if they're constant, is 3 and 2 times d tau. We integrate, we get 6 times tau. The limits are from t minus 1 to 3. When you're plugging the limits, the upper limit, it's 6 times 3, minus when you're plugging the lower limit, 6 times t minus 1, and the equation becomes 24 minus 6t. The exact same equation we got in the previous video. Again, when t is equal to 3, 24 minus 6 times 3, which is 18, which is equal to 6. So when t is equal to 3, the convolution value is equal to 6. And when t is equal to 4, 24 minus 24 is 0. You come back down to 0. So this function here is exactly the same as before. It shows the convolution of f and g. And of course, past 4, they're no longer overlapping. And then the value is 0. So you can see here the, the relationship between the original definition mathematically of a convolution and in the previous video how we can simply graphically show that the overlap, that the height of the first times the height of the second times the amount of overlap of the two functions equal the convolution of the two functions. And now we hope that you have a good understanding of what this is and now we'll do a few more examples to solidify the understanding in the videos to come. And that's how we do that.